let's take a look at how the FA-18 Super Hornet could find itself in a similar position to the World War II F-4F Wildcat and what the Navy is doing to keep its most versatile jet flying. It is often said that history repeats itself, emphasizing the importance of learning from the past to avoid repeating mistakes. It's no secret that tensions are escalating in the Pacific Ocean, especially in the South China Sea. Today, the primary frontline fighter aircraft employed by the U.S. Navy is the esteemed F.A. 18 Super Hornet. This enduring jet possesses versatile capabilities, but is asked to perform a wide variety of missions, making it proficient in various roles without truly excelling in any one area. Introduced in 1999, the Super Hornet, affectionately known as the Rhino among its pilots and crews, has always had significant expectations to fulfill, including replacing the F-14 Tomcat. More on that later in the video. Undeniably, the Super Hornet has been a highly capable multi-role fighter. However, it remains a fourth-generation airframe with relatively limited range. Additionally, many airframes are exhibiting signs of wear and tear from decades of continuous operation. Although replacements like the F-35C are being deployed and programs like the FAXX are under development, in the event of an imminent conflict in the Pacific, the Super Hornet would likely shoulder the majority of the air combat missions for the U.S. Navy. In many ways, the current situation in the Pacific bears some similarities to the start of 1942, when the U.S. found itself embroiled in a conflict with the Imperial Japanese Navy or IJN. During that time, the Navy relied on the Grumman F-4F Wildcat as its frontline fighter, a durable fighter that paled in comparison to its adversary, the IJN Zero. The Zero outmatched the Wildcat in terms of speed, maneuverability, and range. However, as the now famous saying from the Iraq War goes, you go to war with the army you have, which applies equally to the Navy. In 1942, this is exactly what the Navy did, and the outclassed Wildcat would go on to claim a kill-to-loss ratio of 5.9 to 1 in 1942 alone, ultimately ending the war with an overall kill ratio of 6.9 to 1. This serves as a testament to the courage and expertise of the naval aviators who fearlessly piloted these aircraft into combat. The present-day Super Hornet far surpasses the Wildcat in every conceivable way, but at the end of the day, it is not a stealth or fifth-generation aircraft. So what challenges does the F-18 face today? Essentially, we can distill them down to two primary factors. First and foremost is the impending end of production. Boeing has announced that the final Super Hornet will be delivered in 2025 marking the conclusion of over four decades of continuous production spanning both the Legacy Hornet and Super Hornet. While there is some optimism that India might choose the Super Hornet as its next fighter, the Dassault Rafale, which India already operates, is widely regarded as the overwhelming favorite. Even if India were to opt for the Super Hornet, Boeing has indicated that it would only extend the production run by two years. The second challenge revolves around airframe hours. As the Super Hornet ages, the cumulative number of airframe hours continues to increase. The Block 1 and Block 2 series of Super Hornets have a specified service life of 6,000 hours, with each Super Hornet averaging approximately 300 flight hours per year. Naturally, this figure varies depending on operational tempos, mission parameters, and the distinction between peacetime and wartime operational environments. Maintenance and mission-capable rates can also be influenced by factors such as spare parts availability and the overall budget allocated by the Navy. In order to ensure the continued operational availability of the essential Super Hornet, various measures are being taken. Along with the delivery of more F-35Cs, the development and deployment of drones, and the FAXX program still underway, the Navy is actively pursuing strategies to sustain the Super Hornet fleet. One prominent initiative is the implementation of the Life Extension Program, a comprehensive undertaking that encompasses thorough inspections, necessary repairs, and performance-enhancing upgrades. The primary objective is to extend the aircraft's service life from 6,000 flight hours to an impressive 9,000 flight hours. Specific airframes will be granted a Service Life Extension Authorization, or SLEA, 
which will allow them to fly up to 7,500 hours. To achieve the desired endurance of 9,000 flight hours, Airframes will be equipped with a Service Life Extension Program or SLEP kit. Currently, the entire process typically requires approximately 18 months for the initial aircraft, but Boeing aims to reduce this time frame to 12 months as the program advances. Additionally, all active Super Hornets will undergo upgrades to meet the rigorous standards of Block 3, which introduces a range of notable enhancements. These include Tactical Targeting Network Technology or TTNT, which allows the Super Hornet to share data with other platforms and create a common operational picture, bringing 5th gen-like sensor fusion to the Hornet fleet. A distributed targeting processor network, which increases the computing power and processing speed of the aircraft, enabling it to handle more complex missions along with future upgrades. An upgraded mission computer and gallium nitride radar, together which dramatically increase the computing power and processing speed of the aircraft, which enable it to handle more data points while increasing targeting resolution. New Block 3 airframes will also have a projected 10,000 hour service life. An incredible achievement considering the Super Hornets punishing carrier operations, not just the takeoff and landings, but the salt water and high humidity it routinely operates in. Previously, we drew a comparison between the Super Hornet and the Grumman Wildcat. Now, let's shift our focus to Grumman's most renowned feline, the F-14 Tomcat, which was retired in 2006. One of the responsibilities the Super Hornet assumed was that of Fleet Defender, a role previously held by the Tomcat. While the Tomcat incurred higher maintenance costs, its speed and range are sorely missed. Grumman had proposed an upgrade program for the Tomcat called Super Tomcat 21 or ST21. The ST21 initiative aimed to utilize composite materials and upgraded GE F110 29 engine, which would enable the Tomcat to supercruise at Mach 1.3, an enhanced radar system, increased fuel capacity, improved control surfaces, and potentially even thrust vectoring nozzles. Grumman developed the ST21 in response to the Advanced Tactical Fighter, or ATF competition, which pitted the YF-22 against the YF-23. One other notable feature of the ST-21 was the incorporation of Leading Edge Extensions, or LEX, a technology that underwent extensive research on Northrop's F-5 series of aircraft, ultimately leading to the development of the F-18 Hornet itself. Interestingly, the LEX additions on the proposed ST-21 project bore some resemblance to those found on the Super Hornet, which was concurrently in development. The ST-21's LEX, coupled with improved control surfaces, would have enhanced takeoff capabilities, reduced landing speeds, and improved the F-14's high alpha performance. Moreover, the inclusion of thrust vectoring GE F-110 engines would have further amplified maneuverability, while the expanded fuel capacity would have provided the Tomcat with increased loiter time and range. Envisioning a super cruising F-14 with thrust vectoring capabilities gives an impression of what the ST-21 could have been. Today, while we can only speculate about the ST-21's potential, the Super Hornet continues to serve as the tip of the spear, potentially for several more decades. In the event of a near-term conflict, this fourth-generation fighter may find itself engaging with fifth-generation adversaries. As was witnessed during World War II, the outcome may hinge on the skill of the pilot rather than the capabilities of the aircraft itself. To help level the playing field, Block 3 Super Hornets are incorporating radar cross-section reduction measures. I've done a video all about that, you can check it out here. Now you know!